So we are going to look at two different things that we mix together. And just watch what happens. And make sure, you know, if you, if you haven't already, click on that speaker view so that it makes my screen or makes me big. Um, that way you'll be able to see really good what's happening. And I want you really paying attention to what's in the flask. Can everybody see the flask good? Mm -hmm. All right. So here we go. We've got our first liquid. We've got, what do we have here? Solid, liquid, gas? Solid, solid. We've got a solid, right? It's white and powdery. It could be a lot of things, but it happens to be baking soda. I'm going to attempt to pour this in here without missing. Um, we will see. Enough of it should get in that you'll be able to see what we want to do. But just take a look as we observe the properties. Think about the properties that we can observe now. We've got a green liquid, right? We've got a white solid. That's probably about all you can observe from where you're at. But that's okay, we're just going to add these together and just see what you can observe when these are combined together. Is everybody ready? Here we go in three, two, one. I'm just going to dump it. Half of it's probably going to miss, but that's okay. And there it goes. Y'all were probably expecting something a lot more exciting, weren't you? But that's okay. The next one will be a little more exciting. But we did observe a chemical reaction happening, right? We observe some new properties happening. Now, what do we see going on here? What, what's happening? Yeah, it's making foam, right? We see this foam coming out the top. And the reason it's making foam is because a new state of matter is being formed. When that solid mixes with that liquid, it's making a gas. Now, this is a reaction that you have probably all done before. And this reaction's with two very, very simple things that you probably have at home now, baking soda and vinegar. And when baking soda and vinegar get together, they have a chemical reaction. And this chemical reaction makes a new substance. It makes carbon dioxide gas. And I don't think that my, Garrett, do me a favor, go over there and grab a couple towels out of that bag. I don't think that my plastic is big enough to contain all of the foam that's coming out because we did release a good bit of gas from this. So that gas is causing it to bubble up and bubble out. How many of you have mixed baking soda and vinegar together at home before? Everybody done that? Or at school? Anywhere? All right. You've, you've probably, if you haven't done it, you've probably at least seen it. This is one of the first science experiments a lot of the time kids will do. It's, oh, we're going to make a volcano. And it does kind of look like a volcano, right, because it's erupting out. But that's our first demonstration. We see properties being changed by a chemical reaction. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go. But we're going to look at something a little more interesting here now. Y'all want to see a, a little bit better reaction? Let's look at a little bit better reaction and see what we can come up with. If I can do this without knocking anything over or dragging anything off. All right, let's clean this up just a little bit. Maybe. We may be making it worse and not better. I think I'm just smearing it around. Those look like they got chocolate chip men ice cream on them. Yes. Well, it's not going to blow up per se, but we will see a reaction. So for this, we're going to use a couple different chemicals. We're going to use some hydrogen peroxide. It could be. We're going to use some hydrogen peroxide. And let's see, I've got some water over there getting hot right now. And we're just going to put a little bit of this in. Let me get something to scoop it with. We've got another chemical here called potassium iodide. Now, here's the interesting thing about matter and chemicals. And this is going to be really applicable when we get into rocks and minerals. Because what you're going to see as we start looking at different rocks and different minerals, 
you're going to start to see two rocks that look almost alike. They've got a lot of the same properties, but they're not the same rock. You'll see two minerals that are the same color, and they've got the same crystal shape, and they look almost alike, but they're not the same minerals. So it's important to understand there's lots of different properties that we can use to identify things. Don't just look at something and say, oh, it's a white powder, it must be sugar or salt. Don't look at something and say, oh, it's a clear liquid, it must be water. Because that's not always the case. So what we're going to do here, I'm getting some water hot, so give me just a minute. Let me get my food coloring again, and we'll take a look at this next reaction. I'm just going to put a little bit of food coloring in there again a little bit more for good luck right and we put a little bit of soap the soap just captures the gas I put some soap in the last one too that's why it kind of kept foaming out for so long because of that dish soap in there so we're going to add some soap to this one too and that just kind of helps us see the gas that's being released a little bit more because it's just like when you blow soap bubbles that soap kind of forms that film around the bubble and lets us really see that air, that gas that's in there. But we've got a green liquid again, right? It looks just about like the last green liquid, right? If I had those two together, you would probably think they were just the same thing. But last time we had vinegar, this time we have hydrogen peroxide. And when my water gets hot, I'm going to add a little bit of water to, again, I've got white powder. Last time I had baking soda. This time I have potassium iodide. They look very similar, but they're not the same. I'm going to move my phone as far away as I can for safety, just in case anything happens. It is, a, and I don't know if on Zoom, I don't know if you heard, Gary just made the comment, this looks a little more flaky. It's probably hard to see over the computer. But he's right, these are a little bit bigger pieces. The other is more like a really fine powder, the baking soda. This looks more like salt or sugar right here. But we're going to actually add this in with some water to dissolve it. That'll kind of help with the reaction we're going to watch. So I'm just, I'm waiting on my water to get hot here. And once that happens, we will add some water, add the potassium iodide, and see what happens. And our water is boiling. That means it's hot. Let's see if I can do this without missing. And we just need a little bit of this. We'll get a little bit more water. Why not? All right, so we're gonna do this. And again, we can make a few predictions, right? Because we saw what happened earlier. We can predict that you know, I added that dish soap in there. That's going to catch any gas bubbles that are released. So we're probably going to see some foam coming out of this reaction. But let's just see how does this reaction, how does the foam that we create with this reaction compare to the baking soda and the vinegar. We're going to add a little bit more of this. A couple more little scoops of potassium iodide for good luck. And we're going to get all that dissolved, make sure we got enough water to dissolve it, which we do. Perfect. All right, so everybody ready? Here is our second chemical reaction. And just kind of kind of zoom out a little bit. I don't know what this will do, but just, just, yeah, if we're zoomed out a little so we can see kind of above it a little bit so we can see the foam coming out. But let's take a look here. And I'm going to add my potassium iodide. Again, it was a clear powder. Now it's clear liquid because I added some water. I've still got my green liquid here with my dish soap in it. All right, are we ready? Three, two, one. Here we go. All right. So a little bit different result, right? Just a little bit. That was cool, right? And, you know, like I say, the first one wasn't very exciting. It was just kind of like, oh, he mixed it. There's some foam. That's great. Science. But with this, things happened a lot more quickly.
And I don't know, Garrett, can you aim the computer? Look, look what we did, if y'all can see. Can y'all see what we did up here? We actually have our elephant toothpaste that we made. It's up here on the ceiling now. It shot so high, it actually got all over the ceiling. And they came in last, see, I think this is great, because they came in and they replaced that tile last summer because it looked so bad. So I got I to gotta decorate the tile again up here. Um, these, are, these are the unlucky ceiling tiles that get all the science on them. But that's our elephant toothpaste. We call it elephant toothpaste because it looks like somebody just took a big old tube of toothpaste and just squeezed it out and it shot everywhere. But again, that reaction happens because we've got different materials with different properties. And when those properties combine, chemical reactions happen, new substances are formed, this stuff falling on my head, holy cow. All right, but new, new substances are formed. So all of this comes down to, it's, okay, it's like really like raining this stuff down now. That's great. All right, but all of this comes down to the properties that these different materials had. And that's what we're going to be looking at here over this lesson and really over the rest of the unit, even as we get into rocks and minerals, we're going to be talking about different properties that different substances have, different chemicals, different objects, different rocks, different minerals have. And we'll be looking at kind of what happens as a result of that. And that's what makes really, when we talk about chemistry, studying matter, studying reactions between substances, that's one of my favorite things to do in science because you get to do cool stuff like this, but we also, you know, it really shows us a lot as we look at different properties of different matter. It teaches us a lot about the world around us, how it works, how things work together. So we'll be looking at that a lot over the next few lessons. But that's your demonstration for today, some elephant toothpaste and some baking soda and vinegar. Which one was more, more, a more interesting reaction? Who liked the baking soda and vinegar best? Nobody? Oh, Davis. Who, who liked the elephant toothpaste best? I'll, I'll raise my hand to that, right? That's an exciting, right, exciting reaction. Again, very similar looking substances, very different result. Now, let me come over.